Hello, I am Brian Harris from the University of Louisville presenting real-time characterization of data access correlations. I'll be summarizing the motivation to our work and some background, then presenting our proposed technique and its evaluation. First, motivation. I want to point out that patterns in data access exist. These are plots of data requests from publicly available storage traces for various application servers. We share more examples in the paper. Vertical patterns indicate data access correlations when various blocks are accessed more or less at the same time. These correlations can arise from semantic relationships within an application or between applications, such as a web space. Their cause may also be hidden from applications altogether such as a file system inode and its associated data blocks. The horizontal repetition of these patterns motivates the use of these correlations in storage system optimizations. If data is frequently accessed together and these correlations can be detected efficiently, then these insights can be used to inform self-optimizing storage systems. Some examples of potential optimizations are improved caching and prefetching techniques, more efficient data placement, improved garbage collection and wear leveling in SSDs, intelligent IO scheduling algorithms, and even energy efficiency techniques. In our paper, we propose a framework for efficient detection of data access correlations suitable for general use with many op Specific optimizations are beyond the scope of our paper However, we do provide some in-depth examples regarding SSDs in the discussion section. Our goal is to have a detection framework that is online, that is, it operates on a stream, analyzing data access in real time with a single pass. This prevents the need to record traces, which wastes storage space, causes additional disk I.O., and inhibits timely reactions to changes in patterns. In addition, we wish to characterize data correlations in the three dimensions of sequentiality, frequency, and recency. Next, some background on, on our problem. An important distinction is the difference between block and extent correlations. Consider a timeline of events. First, the storage system receives a request for four contiguous blocks. Since these blocks are requested together, they are each correlated with one another. We call these intra-request block correlations, and their number is quadratic on the number of blocks. In this case, 4 choose 2. Suppose that a second request for more blocks arrives shortly after the first. Since these two events occur briefly together in time within the transaction window, these new blocks are correlated with the first few. These are inter-request block correlations, and their number is also quadratic, in this case 4 times 3, or 12. Together, all seven of these blocks form what we call a transaction. Lastly, suppose that a third request occurs sometime later, outside of the transaction. We'll start a new transaction. All these are block correlations, however, Data requests, especially in the block layer, are not made for individual blocks, but rather contiguous regions of blocks specified by a starting block in size, what we call extents. We can greatly simplify the number of correlations by considering only extent correlations. We can infer associated block correlations from any given extent correlation. Focusing on extent correlations rather than block correlations greatly simplifies our problem. This provides a manageable performance as the number of correlations does not explode. However, considering extent correlations is only an approximation. While counting frequencies, there is a potential loss of overlooking some block correlations if extents are not requested repeatedly using the exact same starting block in size. Nevertheless, we show in our evaluation that this extent-based approach yields useful results. Frequent item set mining, or FIM, mines frequently correlated items from transactions. 
the original motivation of FEM was to analyze supermarket customer behavior and to discover which products were frequently purchased together. Correlated items such as gin and tonic could be placed next to each other on the shelf in order to boost sales. FEM was first applied to storage optimization problems in C minor, but like other later techniques, it uses an offline analysis. This requires the storing of traces, inhibits real-time analysis, and prevents timely optimization. Rhythms are a priori, FP growth, and ECLAT, all with their own trade-offs of time and space. Although these operate on offline traces and go against our goals for online automatic optimizations, we do use them to establish a baseline for accuracy comparison in our evaluation. SDEC Plus is an online stream-based approach using a compressible prefix or a CP tree. Its accuracy is determined by the proportion of its pre-configured memory size to handle the pace of disk I.O. streams with reasonable accuracy. In addition, these FEM algorithms are concerned with frequent item sets of maximal size rather than only frequent pairs of items like our extent correlations. Next is our proposed framework. Here is a simple schematic of the storage I.O. stack for Linux. It is similar to other operating systems. What our framework needs from the operating system is to listen to events at the block layer. In Linux, which we used for our evaluation, this is achieved with a tool called Block Trace. Our monitoring module listens for requested extents and groups them into transactions. An online analysis module processes transactions into frequent extent correlations. These correlations then inform any storage optimization scheme designed to enhance performance. The monitoring module listens to block I.O. requests below the file system. In our evaluation with Linux, we use the block trace tool, which ex exposes these events to a user space application. It is typically used to produce offline traces th that can be converted to human readable formats with external tools. However, our monitoring module extracts extents from block traces binary format in memory. The monitoring module also manages the transaction window and groups extents into transactions, which are passed to the analysis module with delimiters between transactions. Our online analysis uses a synopsis data structure, which is divided into an item table and a correlation table. Both have two tiers, one for infrequent and frequent entries. Each entry of the item table contains one extent and a frequency count. Extents are first added to the beginning of tier one and evicted using LRU. When an entry's frequency counter reaches a predetermined threshold, it is promoted to tier two. Subsequent occurrences keep entries in tier two and maintain the frequency counter. The correlation table stores pairs of, of extents in the same manner. Every pairing of extents in a transaction is added to the table. Since frequent pairs must use frequent items, if an item is evicted from the item table, then any pair that uses it is demoted in the correlation table. Finally, tier 2 of the correlation table stores our frequent correlations, so this table is used to inform further optimizations. The overhead cost of monitoring is minimal since block trace only exposes block layer events. Extents are communicated efficiently with delimiters inserted to indicate transactions. The analysis module, however, has a quadratic complexity on the number of extents per transaction. In order to limit its running time and maintain stream processing, we enforce a limit on the number of extents per transaction. The memory overhead is controllable by adjusting the size of the synopsis table. This could be done statically or dynamically. In the paper, we evaluate the trade-off of table size and accuracy with real-world traces. Next is the evaluation of our framework. We use both synthetic workloads and publicly available real-world traces. 
we perform an offline analysis using off-the-shelf FIM implementations for baseline measurements and compare them against our online framework. Our synthetic workloads are constructed to have four random AB correlations with a zip-like popularity. We also insert random background noise. We constructed workloads with three types of correlations, one-to-one, -one, which is one block correlated with another single block. This smallest case models two variables or small records associated at the, at the application level, where accessing one block requires accessing the other. One-to-many is one block correlated with a larger extent. An example of this may be accessing a file system inode and a small file. Many-to-many -many is an extent associated with another, such as a web resource correlated with a, a database table on disk. Here I first want to explain our visualizations. At the left is a plot of the trace of our one-to-many synthetic workload. In the middle is every pair of blocks that occurred together in the same transaction. For each AB pair of blocks, both points A, B, and B, A are plotted. An extent appears as a square on the diagonal. The longer the extent, the larger the square. Rectangles away from the diagonal are extent correlations. Correlations closer to the diagonal have more spatial locality. Background noise creates occasional coincidences that appear as reflections and ripples. This third column is only the frequent correlations, in this case those that appear at least 10 times. The coincidental interference from the background noise has been removed. Lastly, this is the frequent correlations from our online analysis. It has correctly identified the frequent correlations. Here are visualizations comparing the other two synthetic workloads. The frequent correlations in the one-to-one -one plots are single points highlighted with circles. Notice how the online analysis not only correctly extracts frequent correlations, but also removes introduced noise and reflections. In addition to our synthetic workloads, we also evaluated our framework using five publicly available real-world traces from Microsoft Research Cambridge. These traces are widely used in the storage community and include a mix of applications. Since these traces were recorded using HDDs and we replayed them on a modern NVMe SSD, we have accelerated the playback speed of the traces based on the average latency of the different devices. The details of how we did this, along with some summary statistics of these traces, are provided in our paper. These are comparisons using the, the real-world traces. Notice how they are much more complex than our simple synthetic workloads. But still, our online analysis seems to represent the same frequent correlations from the offline analysis. Here are the uh, last two, STG and HM. In this slide, I want to show a numerical assessment rather than the previous qualitative visualizations. Offline analysis using FEM provides us accurate frequency data of all extent correlations. From this, we can construct the optimal solution of correlations that fit into a synopsis table of any size. We ran our framework using a range of table sizes and compared the collected correlations versus the optimal solution. Notice how, in general, the quality is low for a small table and improves as the table size increases. It has found roughly 90% of the correlations by frequency with a table size of 128 to 256,000 entries. For a couple workloads, STG and HM, which have a long tail of infrequent correlations, the optimal solution compares more favorably as less frequent correlations are evicted from our Tier 1 table. Lastly, I want to point out an advantage of our online approach over some offline technique. The data access patterns may change over time as different applications take dominance of the storage system resulting in a change or drift in concept. 
Since our online analysis has a memory limit, it is capable of forgetting old patterns and adapting to newer patterns over time. Here I have replayed 100,000 requests from WDEV and recorded the frequent correlations. Then I replayed 100,000 requests from a different trace, HM. This represents a temporary drift in concept. Afterwards, the workload returns to the previous concept. Notice how the correlations shift to the temporary drift, but then back towards the original pattern. Since the synopsis table has limited memory, it remembers only the most recent concept favoring temporal locality. This allows it to adapt dynamically to changes in data access patterns. An offline technique would contain a mixture of the two patterns. Thank you, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us.